And then comes to the final chakra, the Sarasra chakra. This is the important one. I welcomed you all here, all the Christians, all the Buddhists, all the Hindus. Why? Because we're no different. We're all the same. You know that? God made the trees and the mountains and the rivers. We carved it up. We put names on them. We started fighting to keep them. And the message of Sahaja Yoga is that wake up, we're all the same. Sahaja Yoga is a yoga of integration. It's 20th century yoga. It's responsible yoga. And yoga simply means union with God. This subtle system, or you, is like this microphone. It's very beautiful, but it's useless unless it's plugged into the mains. We're all very beautiful, but unless we're plugged into the mains, we're worthless. We don't say anything. We have to take the next step. We are not complete. And most of us have searched for a very, very long time. The times are precarious. We see that in our society. And as much as we searched, we've got ourselves damaged. We've looked around. And only the guidance of a mother, the love of a mother, and the compassion of a mother could have changed the world. Sri Mataji is that person. She has come. And it is only through the grace of the Divine Mother that we shall find a way out of this that we shall take that next step in evolution. And so do you, Mother. I say thank you. Because realisation, the awakening of the Kundalini, the enlightening of those chakras I just told you about, is the only way that we are going to do it. There is no other way. We're all out there trying. And through Mother's grace, she's here tonight to spontaneously, spontaneously grant you that self-realisation. So Mother, on behalf of the people of Melbourne and Victoria, I thank you for joining us tonight. And after attaining self-realisation to a crowd of 1,500 on two nights, 1,500 a night. In Sydney, they got it. They felt it. The cool breeze of the Holy Spirit. And over 400 flew to the front of the stage, ran to the front of the stage, lined up for over two hours to thank Sri Mataji Nimladevi. I hope that you all get it tonight. Thank you, ma'am. I bow to all the seekers of truth. <clears throat> you are all here to seek the truth. Now one has to realize that truth is what it is. We have to know the truth. Truth 
does not have to know us. And truth lies within us, within our being, and the instrument of knowing that truth is what He has described it to you today. <coughs> now, if you have got your eyes, you can see clearly that this is a white colour. <coughs> You don't have to pay to your eyes for that, that's the truth. You all see the same thing. If you are passing through a dirty lane, it's obnoxious and you know <coughs> it's a dirty lane you are passing through. But a dog does not know that truth. A horse does not know. They can all pass through that without feeling anything about it. So you are at a higher level than all the animals put together, all the living things that you see, you are at a higher place. So. What is the purpose of our being, human beings? <coughs> the only purpose is to know the Truth. Many people say that Truth is love and love is Truth. People don't understand. At human level, it's a very elusive, deceiving sentence. Maybe love may not be the truth, truth may not be love. But when they say truth is love, they mean to say that the all-pervading power of God's love, which is in a subtle form which runs all our living processes is the Truth. <coughs> all of them, all the great scriptures have described that all-pervading power of God exists. You have never felt it. So, you should keep your minds open about it, not to close your minds. It's unscientific, I think, to close your minds. And if there is something existing like that, why should we not know it? It is our birthright to know about that Truth which pervades all over. <coughs> Scientifically it is said that we have evolved from amoeba stage. Why have we evolved from amoeba stage to human stage and have we reached our last stage? Have we reached our absolute stage? Are we at an absolute point? We are not. The proof is we are in a chaos. We do not know what is right, what is wrong. We cannot say this is right and this is wrong. All of us do not say the same thing. Then. That's not the Truth because we have not reached the stage where we feel the Truth, all of us the same. <coughs> but our idea of Truth is very different. I've already told you it's not an idea, 
is. Truth is what it is. It's the existence of truth. So some people think that truth is in belonging to certain faiths or believing into certain groups or into some fanaticism or could be some sort of a false guru who does not know the truth itself. <coughs> but one should know one thing for definite, that if we have to evolve, it has to be done through some living process. And the living process cannot be explained, but can be experienced. <coughs> now in the human body, anything foreign that goes is thrown out. But when <coughs> a lady conceives, that foreign body is nourished, nurtured and thrown out at a right point. Nobody can explain how it happens. It can be explained what is the mechanism that works it out. In the same way, one can explain the mechanism that works out your rebirth. Where you know the truth and the truth dawns upon you that you are the Spirit. You are the reflector of God. This is the truth <coughs> you have to know. For that, there is a mechanism within us placed beautifully. Of course, doctors may not know about it for the time being, they know a little bit. There's the parasympathetic nervous system, they call it about which they don't know much. Now within us lies, as you see, the three channels, one on the left, one on the right and one in the centre of the autonomous nervous system. And these three channels represent on the left side the emotional side, the desire side. And the right channel is for the action of these emotions and desires. And the central path is for coordinating and cooperating. All the problems <coughs> that human beings have are caused by their imbalances. Very simple thing it is. If you go to the roots of everything, this is the knowledge of the roots, of our roots. They are very simple problems because when you have imbalances, when you go too much to the left or too much to the right, you create imbalances. And these imbalances cause physical, mental, emotional, spiritual problems. Of course, there could be also psychosomatic, both combined, like emotional combined with physical also. But it's a simple thing is that you go into an extreme, in anything. The human nature is such that we must go to the extremes. Like one gentleman used to smoke a lot, <coughs> when I started coughing, it was a no smoking zone, I requested the gentleman, Sir, if you don't mind, I have to give a speech in the evening, can you stop smoking? I said, No, I can't. I kept quiet. So he has a double problem. First is the problem that he cannot get over his habit. 
that is his left side. And the another problem is the right side that he cannot get over his ego. Such combinations could be there, but basically the problem is that you cannot remain in the center, in the balance. Sometimes you go to one extreme, from there you go to another extreme. Like some people who are extremely dominating, very arrogant, hot-tempered, suddenly become very sullen, quiet, depressed. Half of the life they impress other and half of the life they get depressions. Such personalities we have all around us and within us. Now how to keep in the center is the problem nowadays. Because there are so many alterations to our attention all the time, we have to alter it. Today you have to say TV, then there's a politics going on, then this is going on, that is going on. Our mind is all the time changing from one to another, skipping from one to another. We are living in a very hectic type of world where our attention is not at all steady in the center. It cannot remain. At this juncture, thank God, the modern Sahaja Yoga was born or was found out. Formerly, <coughs> one or two persons used to get realization. Very few people used to get realization. At the beginning of the tree of life, I should say. But I thought in those days of complete chaos and such a lot of pressures on people. They have no time to go to Himalayas and work it out. You have to have something very instant. But there was a problem with it. Supposing you try to enlighten people and they just get a wee bit, then what happens? Formerly they used to cleanse the body, everything, for years together and ultimately give the Realization to one person, good for nothing. Nobody understood any incarnations, great prophets or saints because they talked of some another world. That's why they crucified Christ or gave poison to Muhammad Sahib, did all kinds of things all over the world. With Sahaja Yoga, this mechanism is activated where you have got this Kundalini, the power that manifests your Self-Realization. She's a power, I call it she, because it's the mother's power. She's your mother. She gives you birth, so she's your mother. And she's your individual mother. She takes all problems upon herself. Every time I've been giving lectures, people ask, but we have read in such and such book, that Kundalini rising gives troubles. I just don't know. Either <coughs> there are negative people who are trying to keep you away from reality, or maybe they don't know what Kundalini is. She is your mother, waiting all these days within yourself this power. In three and a half coils, because it's some mathematics about it. And she is activated, then she rises. Just like a primule in a seed, as soon as you put the seed in the Mother Earth and nourish it with little water, in the same way with little love, the Divine Love, she is activated and she starts rising. With your naked eyes, in some people 
who have obstructions in the lower chakras, you can see clearly the pulsation at the triangular bone <coughs> with your naked eyes. You can see it clearly. Imagine a bone pulsating like a heart. And you can see the rising and you can see its obstruction where it stops. Supposing you are a liver patient, it will go to your liver first, informing that first liver should be corrected. Or maybe if you are a great seeker, then she shoots off, comes out, out of your fontanel bone area, but again she descends back to the problems where she has to attend. It's a very practical thing to understand. Sahaja Yoga, you cannot pay for it. It's nonsense. How can you pay for anything that is living? When you pay for God or somebody says, I'm God or this and that, you pay money. I've been telling you, I've been here four times before, every year I was telling you, you can't pay for God, God doesn't understand money, this is your headache. Why do you want to pay for anything that is living process? But nobody liked me at that time, <coughs> to such an extent that in England they told me that Anglo-Saxon brain cannot understand anything without money. I was surprised who has made this brain, God has made or somebody else. You cannot pay for it, that is the first criteria. It's your own right to have it, it's Sahaja, born with you. And when she rises, she pierces through all these six chakras. The one chakra is below her, which guards the movement of the Kundalini completely, and rises through six chakras and pierces through the six chakra, giving you a cool breeze of the Holy Ghost. Now, no one knows who is Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost is the power of God, is the desire of God, and she is reflected as Kundalini in the triangular bone. That desire is the pure desire within us. All our desires are impure because they never give us satisfaction. Economics says that in general, wants are not satiable. So now we have got the knowledge about the mechanism, but it must work. For example, in this hall you see beautiful lights are there and you must have just put one switch and everything must have manifested, but there's a mechanism behind it, a history behind it. All these centers are the milestones of our evolution. The last one is this, is the limbic area which is called as Sahasrara. If you cut the brain horizontally, you can see as if you have cut a lotus. And the inner part is a vacuum, which is the limbic area. So this Kundalini enters into the limbic area, opens from both the sides, this calyx, or the outside, of this lotus and pierces through that. Now what is the calyx that we have formed are two uh, balloon-like growths within us, one is the ego. When we work, when we do anything, we always think we have done it. Now just see what we have done, it's dead to dead. For example, from some tree they must have made this platform, which was a dead tree, made another dead thing. From something dead they have made the church. 
Now, if you are sitting on the chairs, you can't sit on the ground. The chair sits on our head. Wherever, wherever you move, you have to take the chair with you, otherwise you can't sit. So this matter is trying to overpower us. That's all. This is the ego that builds within us. We have done nothing but just change forms from death to death. Here I'm talking about transforming a human being into a new human being, into a human being where there is spiritual light. In Sanskrit language, a person who is a realized soul is called as Dvijaha, means born twice. And also a bird is called as a Dvijaha, meaning the bird also comes as an egg and then becomes the bird. In the same way, we get a transformation and that transformation brings us to a position where we are in absolute status, in absolute condition. When the Kundalini passes through Agya Chakra here, this one, is the center of Christ, she pushes down both these ego and super-egos, which you see the two balloon-like structures. As a result of that, we get a soft bone opened up again, as you had in your childhood, and you feel thoughtless. There's no thought. If you want to think, you can think, but nobody is going on inside all the time. You feel the peace within yourself. And when she pierces through completely, then you feel the cool breeze coming out of your head. And also if your this center is all right, you can feel the cool breeze around. As a result of that, the centers, which are like this, we can say, the centers which have moved because of our left and right movement on the sides and have broken the connection with the whole, again go back to their original positions and they get nourished. And the energy that was exhausted in them starts flowing. That's how our physical, mental, emotional and spiritual being is corrected. Most of the diseases can be cured with this Kundalini awakening, but no, I'm not curing you, you're curing yourself. Only thing, your medicine is lying within you which has to rise and give you this. This is all yours, for which, why should you pay anyone? Why should you feel obliged? I'm just a catalyst. If this happens to you, is a very great thing because then your hands will speak as Muhammad Sahib has said, that at the time of resurrection your hands will speak. Hands start speaking means what? That on your fingertips you can feel the seven centers and you can see in another person what's wrong with the other person, what's wrong with yourself. Now only if you know what is the decoding is, and how to cure a particular center, finished. Don't have to do anything else but this much. Of course, in some people who are mentally, physically, emotionally, especially spiritually, are sick, it takes little time to settle down. Though you might get your Realization today, but the Kundalini has to be brought back and to be settled there, like, like a little sapling, you have to look after it in the beginning and then you absolutely become the master of it. I've seen people who had their Realization as late as 84 or 85, are today great masters of Sahaja Yoga. It's very surprising. Now, these masters of Sahaja Yoga don't stand on their heads, don't do abnormal things. You don't have to do much jogging or anything. 
your body comes to that position what you need. For example, somebody needs more water, so it's all right, somebody doesn't need more water, it's all right. But certain, certain kind of uh, exercises which are needed to improve the condition of the particular chakras can be done. But the main thing is to keep the Kundalini here so that the spirit which is in your heart has a seat here, is all the time kept enlightened. That's the main job. Now the biggest problem I face today is this, that in India people are quite capable to know who is a real master and who is not. Thank God we are not so rich to throw our money for realization. So we don't have these false gurus there, they all come to Australia or to America, wherever there is money, they are coming down. But the main problem, I don't mind, there are lots of thugs in this world, you see. Smugglers are there, it's all right. And there are many people who are cheated also. But the main thing is they attack the Kundalini. They attack the central path. I've known many people getting cancer because they have been to some gurus, because it is a psychosomatic thing. Even AIDS uh, could be due to certain things. I, I had cured one fellow who was doing TM. I'd cured him completely. Doctor said that he's completely cured of AIDS, but again he started uh, going to some TM fellow again, he got it and he died. It was in Australia. Then I gave it up because you get frustrated with such people. When I told him not to go to that person, particular person, then again he went down to that person. Because these people are using, all these false gurus, are using some sort of spirits to keep you bound to them so that all that you have, your money, your properties, everything they get. Their main purpose, the honesty of purpose is that they want money, that's all. Money they can have, but they can't have money unless and until they mesmerize you or involve you into something nonsensical. I've seen people getting into trouble very much if they have had wrong gurus. And I'm surprised, these gurus have given them nothing, they have taken all their money, they have taken all their wisdom, they have lost their jobs, but still they are sticking on to them like leeches. In London we have people from TM itself, I would say, there are people in London who are recluses, absolutely. They are suffering from some sort of a secret disease they can't explain. Some of the politicians are suffering, but still they are going on and on and on. And I've been telling openly about it. Nobody listens to me. It happened when I told them in 83 or 84 that this disease is going to come to America. They didn't listen to me. I told on the television from San Diego, from Los Angeles, from San Francisco, from New York. But nobody bothered about it and today when I go there, they all say, Mother, we are in it. And you get disgusted with them because they are so much now weak that they cannot get over all those attachments they have had. <coughs> it's the attack of the negative. Tremendous negativity is working out, that you don't get your realization, <coughs> that you don't achieve your highest. So much of negativity everywhere, I find, and I just don't know how I'm going to help all of you. First of all, you must understand that all these wrong things have rendered nothing to you and nothing to anybody else. So many cases of cancer have been cured by surgery. We are making now a big file out of it. 
recently the Delhi government, Delhi University <coughs> has given us a PhD for doctors for research in surgery. Even tr Cambridge may do it. There are so many doctors busy to find out how surge yoga has cured so many types of cancers, livers, diabetes. Already papers have been published about how the physical health of the people has improved by doing surge yoga. Blood pressures, tensions, all these things vanish. The Sahaja Yogis don't lead an abnormal life. They wear normal dresses, they live like normal, decent, of course decent people, not like cutting this part of the hair, that part of the hair, then putting tar on your head. The other day I said, we are not hippopotamus to do all these things, you see. All sorts of abnormal things they give up. They become sensible, serene, good citizens. They have good wives. We had seventy-one marriages this year and you'll be happy to know that all of them are very successful and they have very great children born to them. Children won't be born to people who are all the time fighting among themselves, <coughs> wasting their life. Only bad people will be born to them who can bear all that, but good children are born to surgery. I am so happy to see in Melbourne, we had a very good report from the government for our schools that whatever they proclaim that they are. How many schools can do that? Though it's rather difficult here to run a private school. In all fields, Surge Yoga is showing good results because once a person is transformed, most of your problems will drop out. You are such a satisfied person, you will not be a dishonest politician. You will not be a dishonest preacher. You will not be a bad father, bad mother, and not arrogant children. A beautiful society is established now. In Sydney we have lots of people, in Melbourne also. Only thing is you have to come in the centre and to come in the center, you have to get your Kundalini awakened, free of cost. It sounds fantastic. It sounds out of the blue, normally, but it's nothing so fantastic. Say, for example, now you have got a TV here, but in Indian villages they have not seen the TV. Now, if you take the TV there and say you can see everything, whatever is happening in the whole world, they will say, oh, what are you telling us, stories, how can it be? Then you put it to the mains and it works. In the same way, you are made beautifully within yourself. Human beings are the greatest computers. The greatest knowledgeable things, the whole knowledge that's within them. All that is within has come out and has become the so-called knowledge but they become the knowers. And when it happens, suddenly you find dynamic things happening. We had a boy in Portugal who was doing little pottery work. He came to Sir Yoga today, he's a very big potter, earning lots of money. We had some people who were just used to paint ordinarily, they have become very great painters and earning quite a lot in your country. You just become dynamic and things work out in every way possible. In this short time, whatever is possible for the introduction I have told you, but tomorrow in details I'll tell you all that can work out with Sahaja May God bless you all. Today being the first day, I would like to give some time for questioning. But ask sensible questions. I'm not seeking votes nor I'm going for an election. Here I am to give you what you have. So don't ask questions uh, which are aggressive. 
or if you belong to some group, like the other day we had somebody from born again or something, they are already having trouble and he came to hit me and all that. So that sort of a thing is not needed. Rustam tum aaja dara, koi bhi aaja. Na unko bolo. Rajesh hai? Rajesh? Somebody has to come call her. No question? Yes, one question. Are you a guru or do you have a guru? No, I had no guru and I'm a mother. I'm not a guru. See, Guru is, of course, in a way, Mother is a Guru all the time. <coughs> She's a teacher all the time, no. But there's a big difference between a real Guru and a Mother. See, real Guru in India will give you a real hard time, never go near them. <laughs> One fellow who came all the way from Himalayas, he told me, my Guru has come here and he wants to come and meet you. They also regard me as their mother and they also respect me. So I said, all right, I'll go and see him now. So I went there. So on the way he said, today my guru hanged me uh, by a rope upside down in a well and kept me hanging there for six hours and he used to dip me every time, every hour, and then he brought me up and said, now you go and call Mataji. I said, what's that? It's terrible. I mean, why is he so cruel? So I asked his guru, I said, what do you mean by treating him like this? You have no business. Why do you treat him? He's a seeker. He said, do you know he was smoking? Smoking, uh, he's doing at this time, what will happen to him? Why, why should I give him realization? So I said, what's the problem with his realization? So he went inside. The Guru just get, got angry, went inside. I said, what's the matter with you? He said, my Agha Chakra is catching and my Guru says that nobody opened my Agha Chakra for ten years and I'm not going to open your Agha Chakra. I said, why? I just come here. One minute I opened his Agha Chakra, he got his realization. So he came out, the Guru. He said, that's mother. That's not a Guru, that's a mother. She can do it, not me. Who opened my Agya Chakra? Like that, you see, they are terrible, they take you to task. So don't go near a real guru, they will not take any money or anything, but take you to task. It's better take your Sahaja Yoga and become yourself a guru of your own. And no use asking questions about me, it doesn't, sh doesn't help much, better know yourself. I'm here for you to know yourself, you know yourself, then you know, know me better, isn't it? <clears throat> it's just to see. How do you stop being sad about things? Sometimes it is very hard. Sometimes? It's very hard to be stopped, to stop being sad. Sad? Because you are very left-sided, that's why you are sad. If I bring you in the center, you will be joy and a source of joy too. Something gone wrong with the machine, you see? Supposing something goes wrong with this machine, it will make funny noises. Supposing I am an expert mechanic, I can correct it, then it's flowing all right. Please get up, please. We can't hear you, sir. Um, yes, please, sir. talk to us about the curing of diseases. Uh, 
you have not mentioned so much about the prevention of diseases or the causes of them. You see, you don't get diseases at all after realization. So there's no need to work out much of prevention. After realization, you don't pay any bills to the doctor. So the preventions are not needed. But in certain things, like say, supposing somebody is a liver patient. Now, in Sahaja Yoga, we have two types of livers. Say we have one liver which is a lethargic liver and another one which is an active liver, supposing somebody has. Then we tell them as to the change of diet for some time, for both the things, different diets they have, just the opposite. And once they come to normal conditions, then they have to give up their diet, then they are all right. So the prevention is not much needed because you become such a different person that you are not tempted to do something that is not good normally. And I don't think Sahaja Yogis normally get sick except for some adamant one. The other one, we had one here in Adelaide, I think he had, there was a boy, a very nasty type of a boy. And he was keeping three dogs and he would put his tongue into their mouths and just like a very horrid satanic type, see? He would not listen to us, he was just trying to trouble us. And then he got some troubles because he used to jump with them and do all kinds of things. And then he got some sort of a trouble. We can't help it because he never listened to us and he troubled us a lot. So precautions are like, say, some ladies, say, are very uh, dominating to their husband, say, or a husband is very dominating to the wife. That also causes problems. But gradually they become very sensible and understand their role as husband and wife. So the problem disappears, it can be very serious problems. If the husband is very dominating or, say, he's a flirtish type of a man or he goes about with other women, or he keeps the woman in a very, um, say, in a suspense all the time, or in jealousies and things like that, then she can develop a cancer of the breast. For that, we cannot cure the husband, because if the husband is not in Sahaja Yoga, what to do? So we make the woman so strong, she, she doesn't feel anything about it, she doesn't bother herself like that. You become you see, you, you don't, do not have reactionary nature, you become yourself something, you are not no more a reactionary. So there is not too much prevention needed because you are so strong, you don't need much prevention. But if it is needed, we tell them. <coughs> For example, now somebody smoking too much in the room, smoking room or something, there of course we feel that we should at least cover our face with something to get the smoke in, because they become sensitive also to all these things. But not too much of preventions, because you become very different. Your temptations are different and you just don't worry about all these things which ruin you. Now you jump, say, two belts are going, I always feel like that, one going towards destruction, one towards construction. You jump from this to the construction side. So gradually you move towards construction. Yes, please. Yes. Two questions. How should we meditate? And second question, is the grace of God needed for realization? Is the grace of God needed for realization? Of course. <laughs> Without God, how can you work out? It's all His work. And But you see, if you take the name of God, half people will run away. People don't like that name these days, very bad. The one who is our Creator, the one who loves us so much. We don't know Him, that's why. When you know Him, you will know how far we are away from Him. That's why I take the name of Divine or Divinity because caution. As He said, we should take precautions. That's why I take precaution not to say. And how to meditate that, I'll tell you a little later, all right? That's a very good question. 
is God and God, nothing else. Yes, please. Will you get up, please? If you're too far to the left or to the right, how can you bring yourself to the center without any help? Well, that is the thing you have to learn a little bit, that's all. That's something you have to learn and that I'll tell you how to do it, all right? Now what else? Sorry, sir. The question is that uh, uh, could you please repeat it again about the young people and TM? You talked about TM yeah, it says. And taking away the money. Uh. Is the technique bad or, or what is? Technique is bad and money is bad. And I'm warning you against you again and again. Be careful about it. You'll end up as recluses, you'll be end up with, with some epilepsy, you'll end up with some troubles. I'm warning you before all of you. And if they want, they can prosecute me for that. I can prove it. Yes. You have said that we are the spirit. Ah. Is this the reincarnated spirit? No, no, no. You see, when I said you are the spirit, the spirit is the one that resides in your heart, which is the reflection of God Almighty, all right? Now, that is the one who witnesses us, sees us. He is not in our attention. He is not in our attention. But when we become the spirit, he comes in our, in our attention. And then what happens that our attention gets enlightened, in the sense that sitting here you can feel about anyone, what's wrong with this. Like the gentleman asked about TM. Now, he doesn't know whether it is good or bad, but if he gets realized, immediately he will know how horrible it is, because he'll start getting blisters on his fingers. Do the herbicides and pesticides and other such chemicals, do they destroy our body? Which, which? The herbicides, the pesticides that are used in uh, growing a food. As they, you see, but so that is true, they do. Now say, for example, I would say the way we use these uh, medicines and pesticides and all those things, they definitely are very strong, no doubt about it. But once you are a realized soul, you can fight them, not so difficult. I would say now hybrid food itself, you see, is a very, I don't think is a very good thing to have. Now how we get rid of these pesticides and these things is very simple in India. We have experimented with us, with it, and what we have found out very nicely is this, that the When you use your vibrations or you use the vibrated water, then if you use it on the non-hybrid seeds, which, are, which cannot germinate much, then what happens? That 
that those things which are non-hybrid produce better results than the hybrid. Now, if you are a realized soul, all right, you use vibrated water or if you go round your uh, fields, you don't need pesticides, pests will go away. They just disappear because they understand vibrations. Animals understand vibrations much more than human beings. Pests, the, everything that you use for, they just disappear, they don't want to be there. So you don't use them and then there is no problem of these remains, but many people have to get it. But otherwise also when you are sort of a realized soul, then you are quite strong enough to bear lots of things. You don't get sick very easily, unless and until you do something deliberately. What she said? That, uh, the food we eat in any uh, case, uh. what we buy, that has been poisoned with all these things today. So does it damage us even if we are realized? No, then it does not. If you are realized, then it does not. But so much attention is paid to food in this country. Everybody, I don't think it's so much of a problem that people are talking about. But once you are realized, you are not damaged by anything, anything. It's, uh, all these things are very ordinary. <laughs> there are greater things to fight in this world. <laughs> yes. Yes, madam. How do we become realized? Ah, that's the thing. That's the thing I'm going to do now. That's a good question. That's the thing. Yes, madam. Karma. Does Sahaja Yoga affect karma? It just sucks your karmas. Karmas are all sucked in. See, what are your karmas? Come into your pouch of your ego. And once the Kundalini realizes, she sucks in. Now, what is karmas left now? Because Christ is here, say. I say Christ is here. You take it as a hypothesis. You need not accept me, but it's a fact which you can find out later. Now, the Christ is here. We say Christ died for our sins, don't we say? He died for our sins. If you awaken Christ within your Agya Chakra, He sucks in all your sins. That's what He does. But it's an absurd idea. We have about Christianity also that we must suffer, our body must suffer. Why He has suffered for us? Are you going to suffer more than Him? How much he has suffered? So all the karmas and all that are sakti. There are no, you go into a karmas. You are no more there to be the karmas. You are the spirit now. All right? I'm sorry, sir, I can't hear you. A little loudly, sir. The lecture is going on. What's wrong? Kya bol raha? In short, bata. <laughs> no, I think uh, if, uh, if I may, it is permitted to. Kya bol raha? He's uh, saying that you talked about evolution, hmm. and uh, yet about the modern 
what it is just now? Do you need to change your system to fit into that aspect of evolution? Oh, that's an, what I could make it's out. It's rather a confused question, sir. Will you, if you sit down, I'll explain to you. We have evolved up to human level or say human awareness, right? Our nerves have got a certain dimension of awareness now, but we have not reached our destination. And the destination is that we have to become the Spirit. This is the last breakthrough that has to take place. And the whole system works it out. As I explained to you, in an egg, the whole egg system works it out and a bird comes out of it. In the same way, this transformation takes place within us. But you don't feel any working, it's such a slick system, you don't feel anything about it, it's a very beautiful system. You just feel the cool breeze coming out of your head and you still st feel this cool breeze all around you. It's a beautiful system, beautifully made. Even there, Jung has made a mistake, I think, that he didn't understand that subconscious and collective subconscious, all these lie on the left-hand side, and the supraconscious and the collective supraconscious lie on the right hand side and there's a path in between. He just completely mixed up that point, otherwise he was quite there. Yes, is there any question? If a person had a choice ah. of taking a path which they believe is beneficial to them, but they think that that could hurt people who love them... What oh, they, they should do? take it. You see, you must know one thing, we cannot force it on you at all, never. It has to be asked for. It's a, you see, one thing, you cannot force this. God is not going to fall at your feet, no, no. It's your gain, if you want to have, have it, otherwise nothing. Nobody is going to force you, nothing. You have to have complete freedom because if you have to rise to the entire field of freedom, then you must have your freedom. That's why God gave freedom to human beings. You mentioned that there are uh, many great things that we will have to fight. What are some of these things, please? <laughs> I don't want to frighten you just now. <laughs> All of us together, we can fight it. When we are together, we can fight it, no problem. But there are. Yeah. What happens after you become realized? That I'll tell you tomorrow, no? I said I'll tell you tomorrow. Huh? Some I have told you something. Yes, please. You know, can't come tomorrow? You must give some time to your realization. It's important. Yes. Have you any question? How do the gurus, false gurus, 
um, manage to control people mm. because if their own chakras are spoiled, how do they still have the power to do so? Well, see, they don't... Uh, you cannot control people through your chakras, you can never control. Actually, you never try to control anyone. You enjoy the freedom of another person. So, if their chakras are spoiled, what they do is to, first of all, entice people with big, big advertisements and wrong ideas, talking bombastically about things. And also they have another way of mesmerism, they mesmerize people. There are lots of things they do with the dead, also they practice all kinds of uh, hypnotism, uh, which I have noticed people are so much enticed, they cannot get over it. And they try all kinds of dirty tricks, many things they do. And I think they hit upon the weaknesses of people also. Like a guru who is a real guru will never meet you in privacy. But this false one meet you in the privacy and sort of they'll ask you questions in such a manner that you might give away some of your secrets or something. They also blackmail you. They don't know how they work it out, but definitely, they definitely mesmerize you. Also, they spoil your chakras uh, by turning them the other way around. Now this chakra, if somebody turns it the other way around, you can see some sort of a light or a spark coming out of it and you can get completely uh, enticed by that, completely. You can become a slave of that person. If this chakra is handled the other way around. Yes. So, they also know so many ways, this is called as Kali Vidya in India, that they try all these tricks. Is that sort of a thing happening in Australia? Yes, I think many people are enticed, have been enticed. Now they have got out of it, but still, you see, because this is money orientation, they want to make money out of you, so they'll tell you some sort of a mantra, imagine. Uh, some people had a mantra called as Inga, some had as a Tinga. Now Inga means the tail of a, uh, tail in, a, in ordinary language, not in Sanskrit, Inga means a tail of a scorpion, imagine, what a mantra. Or Tinga means when you show like this to somebody to put him down, Tinga. And they were told never to tell anybody, this is very secret, this is coming from Himalayas, somebody's all sorts of things, you know, and poor naive people from Australia don't know anything about it. If they tell to Indian, he will laugh and laugh and laugh and jump with laughing. They have befooled people like this. And they make a big ritual about it, that you go with this thing, that thing, put so much money here, there, and then you get this thing. Or seven doors you have to cross to meet the Guru, make a big ado out of it. And you are enamored. They'll keep Rolls Royces. I went to Boston and when I wanted to go to their television, they asked me, how many Rolls Royces you have? I said, I have none. They said, we are not interested. If you have no Rolls Royces, we are not interested. Just imagine. It plays, you see, you get the gurus the kind you like, the way you want, isn't it? I should say like that. You should ask for real gurus, real masters, the ones who will make you meet God. Nanak Sahib has said, Guru Vahi Jo Sahib Mili Hai. The guru is the one who makes you meet the God Almighty. Sahib. Everybody has said this, but the trouble is we do not want to take to somebody who is simple. These modern types, you see, having horns and all, <laughs> all kinds of horrible things, that attracts people. What am I to do? I mean, I just don't know how this psychology has come.
Are you sad still? <laughs> no, that's better. <laughs> There's no? If everybody has God born with inside them, oh. uh, there should be no evil. Yes, the evil has to run away. Uh, then we shouldn't worry about them. <laughs> Some will remain evil, so it's all right. There isn't, a, you see, there isn't place in the kingdom of God for everyone, I must say. Evil will not go there. You see, it's all full now, the seats, we should say. Let them go to hell, do what they like, but there will be very few. I see there are so many seekers, such beautiful souls in this world, though misguided, but there are good people, very many. So many good people could never have existed on this earth, I think, but they are misguided, that's all. Yes, please. What's it? Can you stand up? What did you say? What is your opinion about the Hare Krishnas? Ah, you should find out now what they are up to. You see, this is not the way to go to God. Like Matt saying something, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. In our country, everybody says that. Even the sweeper, when he sweeps, he goes on saying Hare Rama, Hare Krishna. That's not the way you go to God, it's making fun of God. I'm sorry, the last part, could you say it again, please? Kya kare? I can't hear it. I'm sorry. It's loudly, please. Can anyone become self-realized and is there anything that can block it from happening? Yes, it can. Yes, it can be. But you don't worry. It can block some people, it does. It's all right, but ultimately they'll get it. If not today, tomorrow, if not tomorrow, day after, they'll get it. So far we have not met anyone who hasn't got it, who has been persistent on it, who has felt it. In the beginning people used to take too much time to feel it, but nowadays I find most of them feel it very fast. Yes, please? One more question? Two more. All right, now two, two more and no more. What's it? What's he say? You have said that you can cure physical problems with Sahaja Yoga. Is that not just then a physical problem? Yeah, so what? No, no, you see, it physical also gets cured. You see, that's a part of one of the chakras. You see, chakras have got all these things, one after another. So after enlightenment, also physical gets cured. I didn't say only physical, did I? All right? Now, you have asked questions. Should we have those last two? Is it all right? All right? You will be very much satisfied, I tell you, after some time. Now let's have... Who are the two ladies? Oh, huh. What's she say? Why are there so many different rites and ceremonies and not just uh, a simple approach to God and realization? Is that right? Yes, it is. It is, madam. It is very simple. You are just facing me, you'll get your realization. But if you want to know the mechanism, then you have to know it that way. See, mechanism is complicated. If you don't want to know the mechanism, there is no need. But you want to know the mechanism always then you have to know all those things, isn't it? Any mechanism is complicated. It's not that complicated, also when children know. If you don't want to use the mechanism, then it's all right. 
But if you want to be the engineer, then you want to know. But first you get your Realization. As I told you just now, there's a history behind it. I already told you that there is thing behind it, as the mechanism is there. It's not that simple as that. This can be more complicated than that, can be deeper than that, but depends on how far you want to go. If you just want to have your Self-Realization, it's all right. But if you want to give Realization to others, you have to know all those things, isn't it? Otherwise, how will you work it out? All right, what else? Is there something as faith? Faith. Is there something as faith, and can we overcome it with realization? Faith. Faith. Of course. Of course. Faith. Of course. All these things are below the spirit. Your eyes transcend everything. You transcend everything. That's the mastery I'm talking about. No. I think that was asked earlier. What she say? What karma? I've told you already. You people have read a lot, I think. We have karmas, that's, a, that's the thing written before Christ. After Christ, whose karmas are left? He's taken away all our karmas. Already He said it. He has died for us, isn't He? This was said before, I mean, karma theory was when Christ, Krishna was there, thousands of years back. Now Christ has come. See, every tree has different, different flowers at different times. So according to timing now, Christ has come, He's talked about, He's taken away the karmas. Now at this time, you have to get your Kundalini awakening. Krishna didn't talk about it, that doesn't mean Kundalini was not there. Then now, let's have the last. How much uh, truth is there in the Bible today as when it was first written? Oh my, <laughs> it's quite a lot. You see, despite all the things they tried to hide, and despite there was all kinds of disturbances in the Bible, I must say there's still quite a lot. It's quite a lot. But we have to be realized to understand Christ to understand what He said. First of all, Realization must take place, otherwise you can't understand. Quite a lot, Bible. Because they didn't know where the truth was hiding, so they couldn't remove it, luckily. Yes, Madam. It is said that there was a secret baptismal rite given by Christ which has been edited out of the Bible. Do you equate this with Self-Realization and the awakening of Kundalini? Of course. Of course. Christ must have talked about Kundalini. Today only I was saying. He must have, but you see, He was given only three and a half years to talk to people. What can you do in three and a half years, you know? It's nothing, no, such a short time. You have no idea that in England I was for four years struggling with seven Sahaja Yogis. It's not easy. In those days, and then his disciples also got very much upset. 
because he was crucified, so everybody started asking, uh, how is it if he was God's son, how was he crucified? That was his job, he had to do that. He had to pass through this, through his crucifixion. All is explained in Sahaja Yoga, Christ's life, Muhammad's life, Rama's life, Krishna's life, everything is absolutely explained and you can see for yourself that they are all one. Christ Himself has said, those who are not against are with Me. Who are those? But we are not allowed to uh, see anything else, just like uh, horses, we have blinkers, we can't see anything else. If you want to know about Christ, better read Devi Mahatma. It's not described much better. That's why Christianity can be very fanatical, I can tell you. Because you see, the blinkers are here, you can't see anything. You can't read Gita, you can't read anything, you see, going anywhere else means you are a non Christian. Such an organized thing. But if you open your eyes and see for yourself. Such a great personality like Christ. See, Onkara Himself incarnated that Christ. They have made such a mess out of it, I tell you. Who can believe in Christ when they say what Christianity is? Such a mess. Same about, I would say, Hinduism, same about Islam, every religion is the same style. It's the same style. There's nothing to choose. All have gone wrong. In the name of God, wars. In the name of God, money. In the name of God, enjoying women. Lust and greed. While Christ has said, Thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. Because he rules the eyes. You will understand what Christ is once you are realized. Yes, now still. <laughs> Is there such a thing as uh, people not being ready for Self-Realization in this lifetime? I don't think... I don't say that. I think all of them are there for Realization. Everybody can get Realization. But if you are identified with nonsense, if you put your foot in the crocodile's mouth and one foot on the boat, what are we to do? It's a blossom time, it's a special resurrection time. This is the time of judgment, has to happen. Everybody must get their chance. God is justice, He is fair. Now, <laughs> still going on, all right, ask one question. Now let it be the last, all right? <laughs> because there are so many who are anxious to get Realization, madam. Now come along, what's the, your question, special one? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, if you could just... Uh... Will you tell us about immortality? Uh, through Self-Realization, will we know the immortal? What we know? The immortal. Of course. Of course. Will we know the... the immortal? That's the Spirit. That's what I'm saying. That's the Spirit. All right, so let's have it now.
All the questions are over. Now, first of all, we have to understand little cooperation is needed raising the Kundalini. If you could just take out your shoes, this Mother Earth helps me a lot and help, will help you a lot. Just take out your shoes. Simple thing, taking out shoes is not difficult, is it? All right. And if you can put your feet on the Mother Earth. Now those who don't want to do should go away, should not disturb us. I'll be thankful those who don't want to do it should go away. It is absolutely a freedom and hardly takes about five to ten minutes, much less than your questioning. <laughs> All right. Now both the feet on the ground separately because these are two powers, as I told you, the left and the right. They should not be mixed up. Now left hand is towards me because this is the desire you have, that you want to have your Realization. You can keep it comfortably on your lap if you want to, be comfortable. You need not put your neck very tight or very low, just in the center. With the right hand I will tell you how you will raise your own Kundalini, very simple. First of all, I'll tell you and then you'll have to close your eyes and do it. First of all, you'll have to put it on your heart, just like this. Now in the heart resides, all of you should do it, on the heart. On the heart resides the Spirit, all right? Please do it, sir, please. You don't want to do it? What's the matter? <laughs> He's got it already, I think. <laughs> He's in thoughtless awareness. Now, put it, your right hand on the heart. And here, heart, in the heart resides the Spirit. Below that is the center here, is of principle of mastery or guidance or guru or ten commandments on the left hand side. Now below that is another center down below, here on the left-hand side. Everything works on the left-hand side. Below, in the lower part of the abdomen, on the left-hand side, is the center through which all the divine laws work. So then again we go up, on the upper part of the stomach, on the left-hand side. Then we go to the heart again. Now here we go, in the corner between the neck and your shoulder and turn your head to the right. It's very simple, like that. But don't take your hand from the back, just from here, from the front. Hold it tight. This is the main center that catches, because you feel guilty for nothing at all. That's a fashion nowadays to feel guilty. Now don't feel guilty. You have come at the door of God's kingdom. So be pleasantly placed towards yourself and forgive yourself. Don't feel guilty at all, be happy. Now, put your hand on top of your head in such a manner, I mean, on, on your forehead and press it on both the sides in such a manner as you press it when you have headaches. Press it slowly. Then take this hand on the back side of your head and put the load of your head on that hand, like this, slowly. Now bring this hand and stretch it nicely the center of this palm, you put it on the fontanelle bone area, which was a soft bone in your childhood. Now move it seven times 
the scalp, keeping the fingers out. Move it seven times, putting the left hand towards me, slowly, seven times. Now, now first of all, you are not to feel it. You should be pleasantly placed towards yourself, in a very happy mood. You shouldn't say, I've done this wrong, that wrong, nothing of the kind. Now, close your eyes. Even you can take out your spectacles if you want, because sometimes the eyesight gets better. So, close your eyes, put your left hand towards me and right hand on the heart. In the heart resides the Spirit. So ask me a fundamental question. You can call me Sri Mataji or Mother, whichever way you like. Mother, am I the Spirit? Ask this question in your heart three times. Mother, am I the Spirit? Please put both your hands feet together. You don't want to do it? Madam, ask this question. Now bring that hand on the left hand side of the upper part of the abdomen, of the stomach, press it, and here you have to ask another question, because if you are the Spirit, you are your Master also. Ask me a question, Mother, am I my own Master? Three times, please. Take down this hand, down below, again on the left hand side in the lower part of your abdomen and press it hard. Now this is the center of pure knowledge of the laws that are divine. So you press it hard and please say six times because there are six petals to this center. Mother, may I have the pure knowledge? I cannot force, so you have to ask for it. So ask for it. Mother, please, may I have the pure knowledge of the truth? Six times. Ask from your heart. Now, take this hand up first, press it on the upper part of the abdomen, on the left hand side, and here ask for ten, ten times, ten times. Or you can say, here you have to help the Kundalini. You have to help the Kundalini to coordinate with her because she has started moving now. As soon as you asked for pure knowledge, she started moving. So here you put your hand and press it hard and ask, or you can say it just to support the Kundalini with full confidence, Mother, I am my own Master. Mother, I am my own Master. Say it ten times, please. Now, ten times. 
with full confidence, without any guilt, without anything. I am my own master. You have to support the Kundalini. Now, now raise your hand to your heart. Here again, to support your Kundalini to rise, to cooperate with her, with full confidence, you have to see the greatest truth lies within you, that, Mother, I am the Spirit. Mother, I am the Spirit. Please say it twelve times. I am the Spirit. Please say it ten times, with full confidence. You have to know that God Almighty is the ocean of love and grace, but above all, He is the ocean of forgiveness. He is the ocean of forgiveness and He forgives whatever we do. After all, human beings have to commit mistakes, there's nothing wrong in it. No need to be angry with yourself at all. Please raise your right hand on your shoulder in the corner between the neck and the shoulder. And you press it hard. And you say with full confidence sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty. Please say it sixteen times, turn your head to the right. Please turn your head to the right and say, Mother, I am not guilty at all. Please say, Mother, I am not guilty at all, sixteen times. Now, please put your right hand on your forehead across. Press it on both the sides. Here, From your heart you have to say, how many times is not the point. From your heart you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now many people think that's very difficult to forgive, but actually we do not do anything whether you forgive or we do not forgive. But if we do not forgive, then we play into wrong hands. So say it from your heart, Mother, I forgive everyone. Now, take this hand on the back side, put your head on it and turn it upward, let it rest on the hand. Here for your own satisfaction, you may say, O Divine, please forgive me if I have made any mistakes. This is only for your satisfaction, I am saying. Now don't count your mistakes. Please don't count your mistakes. 
You have to be very loving and sweet towards yourself. Stretch your hand, please, fully. Put your center of your palm, please, on the fontanelle bone area and press it very hard and move it very slowly seven times. Here again you have to ask for your Realization. So say, Mother, please give me my Self-Realization. Say it seven times. I can't force it on you, I'm sorry. Seven times. Now take down your hand, please, slowly. Open your eyes slowly. Now put your left hand on top of your head and right hand towards Me. Left hand on top of your head, left hand, right hand towards Me. Now see if there's a cool breeze coming. Now move up and down and see if it's there. Right? Feeling it? Little, some people get it that point, some get it very high. Just see it, little bit higher. Don't doubt yourself, please don't doubt yourself. Now, put the left hand towards Me and see with the right hand. Some might be getting hot, doesn't matter. Hot will become cool very soon. You can bend your head and see for yourself, it would be better and easier. Now, put the right hand again towards Me and with the left hand. All right? Now, put both the hands towards the sky and ask a question three times. Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? That is the Kundalini. Is this the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost? Is this the Brahma Chaitanya? Is this the love of God that is all pervading power? You ask any one of these three times. All right, now we can keep it down. Now let us see how many of you have got it on top of your head and also in other or in your hands. Please put both your hands. I want to see how many have got it on top of your head or in your hands. Both the hands, please. Don't be doubtful. If it is there, put your hands up. Not today, tomorrow, they'll It's quite a lot. Quite a lot of people. You got it now? Good. So, no questions tomorrow. <laughs> Good. May God bless you. Quite a lot of people have got it. Some people haven't got it, I must say. Uh, Sydney was better in a way. But I think we spent too much time in questioning. That's how people so lose their uh, attention a little bit. Doesn't matter. If it has not worked out, it will work out tomorrow in any case. 
and I'll be here again to meet you and to greet you and I'll explain to you all the rest of things. Those who haven't got it, if you are anxious or to get it, I think you could... they can come down here and you can work it on certain people, a big row of people didn't get here in the centre. If you can see some of you people, uh, those these two persons should get it, I don't know why they didn't... you didn't feel it? Sure? I think you did feel, madam. You felt it? You felt it? Good. You can feel each other, you can feel each other's head. Yeah. What about you? No? What about you? Got it. Got it. Most of them have, but in the third row or fourth row, there are people who have not felt it, please. Uh, do you mind uh, seeing them or what should we do? We also will be having a workshop later on. Just see, your neighbours, you see from your neighbours, should see. This gentleman, can you see on his head he hasn't got it? You put your hands, you said you didn't get it. Just see this gentleman, why he hasn't got it? Hello. Some Sahaja Yogi should see some of these people. Third person, fourth person. No, she never tried. She was just sitting there, tight. Maybe in the hands, but... He's got it. You've got it? Now he's felt it, now he's felt it. You see, it's one of the Sahaja Yogis puts the hand, also they'll feel it. Those who haven't put it in the first row, raise your hands, please. Ah, just see here, this gentleman, just one minute, they can work it out. Ah. Also, you can watch me without thinking, you see, just see. Just watch me without thinking. Really? Raise it, raise it. Today I worked very hard, I think they should. Now you felt it. All right. Now, can we have some more surgeries to work out here? Just see. You didn't feel that? None of you? Did you feel? What of the boy who was feeling sad? Just see. Did you feel? Did you feel the cool breeze? The second number. There, with a yellow, this thing. He's felt it. Now you've got it. Now you have to give joy to everyone, all right? <laughs> He's got it. Good. This lady is here. Just see. Take one or two persons who haven't felt it and who are desired. No? Hmm? Better. He's got it. Has he? What? Is he feeling it? This false star? Ask him for his guru or someone must be there. He had some guru? Now he's feeling it. With the slightest thing here and there, it just loops down in a funny way. But are the surgery is gone. Come along. Just see this lady is here, she wants to have a little. Didn't feel it? You did not feel? Yeah. All right. Yeah.
Now you must inform your friends and bring them along tomorrow. Hmm, better. I think in the second row, I think, in the third row. What about the gentleman who asked about precautions? Did you feel the full breeze? The gentleman in the fourth row. Hey, Rustam. Fourth row, they can have the precautions. No, the other. I don't think char. Fourth one. In that row, yes, first row. Just see. Ah, he's the gentleman. Did he feel the cool breeze? That's it. Give him realization. I knew. Give him realization. Right heart, right heart. Give him a bandhan on right heart. Ha! Huh, now, see that. Are you feeling relaxed? Can't think. Just try to think. Tomorrow was ho jayega. I'll manage. No? Very much. Right heart. Right side, yes. Right to the left. Yes. Can help me with the shoes and a little bit. So I don't know why it's can't reach them. Thank you. See, this one has forgotten. Yes, thank you. Done a good job, I think. Worked out well. It's difficult to get in the seats because they're so mm. close. It's difficult to get in between the seats. The way they're yeah. designed, they're too mm. close. Let it be. This lady didn't do anything, but just sitting tight. Should have got your realization, what a chance. <laughs> She's come all the way. You, I'm saying about this second one. Yeah. Didn't do anything. Should I? It's just five minutes. Heaven and earth. What about you? Come along, come along. Come along. You want to say something? Come here. No, you. Saying something to me? No, it's all right. I'd like to meet them if they want to. Come along. Ah. Would you 
like them to come to the front? I would want just to be there when it's hotter. If you'd like to finish, you can come to the front. working hard. <laughs> <laughs> Look at their eyes. You see, his eyes are black like mine. Look at my eyes. Let me be done. Sparkling. Look at their eyes. 
What is fun in life? <laughs> 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 Ja, nee. Much better. Yeah. As it is, isn't it better now? Yeah. You don't see any disease there. Nothing is shaking. Yeah. Uh, when the workshop will be on Thursday, will it? Thursday. But now the Parkinson's disease, you must. You are not shaking at all. No. Then what's happened? <laughs> You're cured <laughs> already. Okay. All right. Thanks see, there's mother. nothing is shaking in you. What's shaking? Parkinson's disease, you shake a lot, don't you? Yes. So laugh, you're all right. <laughs> what are you worried about now? She's all right. <laughs> that won't be. Accept that. She was accepting, but she's were fr frightened. May God bless you. Thank you very much, Mother. Thank you yes, for coming sir. over. Thank you. I bring some more people. What's that? It's from me. <laughs> all right, thank you. What's your name? You put the name in there? Yes, Helen. Helen. All right. Thank you. Sure, Helen. So, got it. Yes, He's the one who said about precautions? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mostly those who do not ask questions are better off, I think.
7.30. And there's also a back up um, workshop at one of our ashrams in, in Kew, at 1267 Burke Road, Kew. On your way out, if you'd like to take a leaflet with that sort of information on it, we'd be pleased to see you on Friday and also tomorrow night at 7.30. Thank you.
Australian, out and out. Your parents are Dutch. All right, come along. Makes a difference. Come along here. Or Friday. No, it's better. <coughs> what is happening in your hands? Nerves are dying. In the hands, what's happening? Hands and feet. Dying? No. His nerves are dying. <laughs> Left. Raise his candle, raise his candle. No, 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 there's nothing like that. You see, it's fine. It's fine. Raise his candle, he's right. Take off his shoes. Take shoes off. Take shoes off.